I've been so blessed this morning preparing the message all week. I've been looking at some things. And it's like the Lord opened heaven and just poured out some things on me today that I'm going to share with you eternal things, everlasting things. And I know that if you can catch it the way I caught it, you'll be healed for good forever in experiencing the blessings of the Lord. I want you to open up your Bibles with me, please, to the book of Revelation, last book in your New Testament, 21, chapter 21, and verse 22. Let's stand for the reading of God's Word. Revelation, chapter 21, and verse 22. And I saw no temple therein. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. I want to use for a subject this morning our real temple. Our real temple. You may be seated. John has saw the new city Jerusalem coming down from heaven as a bride adorned for her husband. Walls of jasper, streets of gold, no sickness, no disease, no more sorrow, no more tears. A city, four square, lit with the glory of God and the power of God. John it, it describes the trees on each side of the golden streets. He describes the gates of pearl. He describes the walls of jasper. He describes what he can in the finite mind in his finite understanding, the glorious presence of this new city, Jerusalem. Would you pull me down just a shade up a little bit too loud? And uh, I got to looking at it and I understand that God's people are given a, pull me up just a shade, I got me down too much. You're de-hollering me here, Amen. Touchy, touchy, touchy. The PA system, not me. <laughs> Leave me alone. But anyway, uh, John sees breathtaking heaven. I mean, it is, I'm convinced that we won't need to breathe because we won't be able to breathe when we see how glorious and beautiful it is. So John looks, and I, and I realize that Israel has always or desired, they haven't always had a temple, but they've always desired a temple. And I understand that in the millennium, there'll be what is called the millennial temple in Ezekiel 47. But I got to noticing that in this beautiful city and where you and I dwell, the church of Jesus Christ, there'll be no temple. Because the temple is the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb thereof, the Lamb of God. I love that phrase. The temple is the Lord God Almighty. Say it with me, Lord God Almighty. And the Lamb is the temple in it. And I'm gonna share some things with you this morning that will just, uh, if, if you're listening down deep in your heart, it'll be a breathtaking experience this morning. It was for me. I'm going to look at the old te the temple that, that is going, well, I say an old temple. It's the new millennial temple. And I'm going to compare it to what God has prepared for you and I that are born again and children of Christ. So you're going to have to put on your spiritual thinking cap this morning and let the Spirit of God lead you and guide you because I'm gonna point out some things about that temple in the millennium there in Ezekiel 47 that will literally cause your heart to understand that what God does in the natural, God does in the supernatural. What God has done for Israel, God has done a million fold greater for his bride, the church of Jesus Christ. One day, 
And I do believe in the millennial temple. I do believe that one day there will be that glorious millennial temple. You say, well, how do you know it's gonna be in the millennium? Because there'll still be a sea on planet earth. In the new heaven and the new earth, there is no sea. The new heaven and the new earth. But I want you to go with me to Ezekiel 47, verse one and two. And I'm gonna break this scripture down some in, in verse one and two and show you some things that I believe will help you understand the comparison between our temple, our real temple, the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of that new place in which we will dwell. And it says, afterward he brought me again unto the door of the house. And behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward, for the forefront of the house stood toward the east. And the waters came down from under the right side of the house at the south side of the altar. I want to point out in verse one, it tells us that waters come out from the threshold of the door. It also, the, the water come through and from under the altar. I'd like to say right now that in this temple, there'll be a mighty river that will flow out of the temple of God in the millennium, that millennial temple. And that river will intensify. There's something about a river. A river will become stronger and stronger and stronger. Its, its starting point may be a trickle. But it will end in a vast, huge lake body of water. In fact, I've been at the beginning of Finley River and it's just a little trickle out of, out of the ground. I've been to springs where it begins out of a cave and as it goes, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. What's a, and what's fascinating about this temple, the waters will flow from the door, under the threshold of the door, under the altar and out into the masses, the multitudes of people in Israel. This river will intensify to the fact that it will be a roaring river. It will get deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper as it flows from the temple of God. In fact, a river is a spontaneous outburst. And because the water comes from the door, the threshold of the door, and out from beneath the altar, it gets bigger, deeper, vast, and a vast body of water will begin to flow and it will bring every, everything that water touches will be life. <clears throat> if something's dead and that water touches it, it will be life. That water that flows from the altar of God, that water that flows from the door, the threshold of God, will flow from this millennial temple <clears throat> and it will make the desert bloom. It will become so vast that it will join the seas and the waters together. And what's amazing about this river, as it grows, it grows, it grows. Rivers grow because of tributaries. But these, this river from the temple of God has no tributaries. It all comes from the force and from the altar of God. Nothing rushes into this river except what flows to the altar. And I want to say right now that if you're going to get anywhere with God, you've got to go through the altar. If you're going to have God's blessing, you've got to walk through the door who is Jesus Christ and you've got to go to the altar and everything that you have and everything that you ever hope to have will come to the altar where Jesus Christ died, bled, bled and died on the cross of Calvary and rose again from the grave. And so I'm gonna break down verse one and two, and then I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about practical lessons spiritually. The Gentile church, the, the, the church made up of Jews and Greeks and, and uh, male and female bond and free, the church of Jesus Christ is not promised a material temple. We have our temple and our temple of course, it's our body. Our body is called a temple. 
uh, we live in Jesus Christ and he himself when he walked the earth was in a temple and one day we'll go to heaven, new city, Jerusalem and God, the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb thereof will be the temple of where we live in, in eternity. But let me show you something. As they begin to measure, as he begins to look at the architect and the structure of this temple, this millennial temple, he begins with saying, afterward, he brought me again unto the door of the house. Now, I'm going to hook into that in just a little bit, but I want you to understand the last part of this verse says, waters came from under the right side of the house at the south side of the altar. Meaning waters came from the right side, waters came from the door, threshold of the door, and came from, through, and from the altar of God. That isn't by accident, my friends, that it's worded that way. If the Old Testament temple was built as a picture of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and it was, the Temple of Solomon, the tabernacle in the wilderness, all was built as a picture of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, types and shadows of Jesus Christ. Then this millennial temple must be a great picture of our future spiritual inheritance with the Lord. I'm not here to talk to you about the millennial temple. I'm here to talk to you and I as part of the church of Jesus Christ. So in chapter, in verse one, he talks about coming through the door. And how many know Jesus Christ is the door? Hello. Jesus Christ is the door. And through him comes the rivers of water because of an altar that Jesus Christ died upon. Now don't that hook verse one together pretty good? Jesus Christ is the door. We go through the door who is Jesus Christ and because of Jesus Christ going to that altar, bleeding and die, rivers of living water flow out to us through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. In fact, Jesus Christ said this in chapter 10 of St. John, chapter, uh, verse 9. John 10, verse 9. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find a pastor. Isn't that, isn't that awesome? In fact, Jesus Christ said of the waters of life, in John chapter 7, verse 38, he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Wow. Now prepare to be amazed. Are you ready? Prepare to be amazed. I'm not amazing. I'm a flop. But the word of God is amazing. Prepare to be blessed. Verse 2. Let's look at verse 2 of, of Ezekiel 47. Here's what it says. Then brought he me out of the way of the north gate, or out of the gate northward, and led me about the way without unto the utter gate by the way that looketh eastward. And behold, there ran out waters on the right side. I want you to point out, I want to point out three, three things here. Three words. North. Everybody say north. Way. Everybody say way. Gate. Now you notice there is the north, the way, and the gate. These are all pictures of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I want you to notice he brought me out. This is the, the spirit of God, the angel, the man of God, measuring the temple of God. He brought me out of the way of the gate northward. Now we know that the gate is, and Jesus Christ said in Matthew 7, that enter in at the straight gate. Because narrow is the way, straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leads into everlasting life, right? So we know that Going the way of Jesus is a straight gate. Go to the straight gate, the Bible says. Because narrow is the way that leads to underline. Wide is the gate that leads to condemnation and death. 
And he says, he brought me out of the way of the gate northward. Now listen to me. He brought me out of the way of the gate northward. Now, what is so significant about northward? Well, northward is where God lives. <clears throat> northward is where God is. And he brought me out of the gate, or through the gate, there northward. You say, preacher, I don't understand. Well, the book of Job says in chapter 26, verse 7, he stretcheth out the north over an empty place and hangeth the earth upon nothing. God began the creation from the north. Psalm 75, verse 6, for promotion cometh not neither from the east nor the west nor from the south. Well, if promotion doesn't come from the north, the east or the, uh, 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 promotion doesn't come from the, the, the south or the west or the east, then promotion must come from the north. Even the devil do, knew that. In Isaiah 14, verse 13, the devil said, I will sit in the heavens. I will ascend to the sides of the north. So we know that God is in the north. And so it says he, he took me from the gate. And the gate is the way to God. And he took me from the gate to the side to the north. And as I went to the north, he led me, listen to me, he led me in the way. Look at that verse 2 again. He led me about the way. Now, listen to me. God always brings you through a gate. He brings you to the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ is the way. John 14, 6, Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So, so God brings us through the gate by the way, who is Jesus Christ, to the straight is the gate and narrow is the way to eternal life. And, and he takes us through the gate northward toward heaven by the way which is the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And you'll find that phrase way, 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 the way, the way, the way, the way. And he took him the northward way and as he took him to the north way, he led him about in the way. Right now, I'm living in the way. You and I as Christians, you're living in the way. Are oh, you listening to me? Yesterday, if you were a Christian, yesterday you were living in the way. Tomorrow, as a Christian, you'll be living in the way. I lived my whole life from the day I got saved till now. I've been living in the way, been going the way. I've been making, making my, my, my destiny toward God and looking toward God and the loving God. And the Bible says he led him in the way without the utter gate. In other words, he takes us from the north gate into the gate by the way, and then he takes us about in the way without, and then, then he takes us to the other gate. By the way that looketh eastward. Then it goes on to say, by the way that looketh eastward. He takes us about by the way. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And he takes us by the way. And as he takes us by the way, he takes us to the other gate. That other gate is where the temple is. That other gate is where God, the Lord God Almighty, and the Lamb of God is the temple there in it. He takes us to the other gate. And when we come to the other gate, we go, walk through the gates and we look, we look. We're, we're, we're pointed eastward. We're looking eastward. Why? Because eastward is where the sun comes up and Jesus Christ comes and he, and he says to you and I, he, he leads us from the north. He leads us to, uh, from God Almighty. He leads us in the way. He directs us in the way. He points us in the way. He takes us to the other gate and we stand and look eastward because there eastward is where the sun comes up and we look eastward because that's where Jesus Christ, the Son of God, arose from the grave. And I want you to know, he not only arose from the grave, but one day as lightning shines from the east to the west, so shall come the coming of the Lord and Savior be. And I want you to know, when, listen to me, everybody knows that when you bury someone, when you bury someone, plant them, and you put them in the graveyard, Maybe don't everybody knows this. Maybe not everybody knows this, but you ought to know this. That's the east. Now, I could have swore it was the north, 
but that's the east. So how do you know, preacher? Because the sun shines right through, the, through that glass that comes up. That's the east. So that makes back there behind you the west. That's the north. How do you know that's the north, preacher? Because that's where all the stuff grows on the side of the church building. That's the south. Now, I, if I was thinking that's the north, that's the south, in my mind, that's, that's, that, that's the south, that's the north, and that's west, and that's east, in my mind. But it's because how the building's setting, no kidding, that's the east. In a graveyard, when you bury someone, you don't bury them laying down this way with their head facing west. You never bury a body with his head down here facing west. Nor do you bury a body facing south. Guess which way you face them when you bury a body? You face them toward the east. And you put their feet pointed toward the east so that when the Lord comes, <laughs> when they wake up, there he is, coming as lightning from the east to the west, so shall the coming of the Lord be. Hello? You say, well, preacher, that don't, that don't make sense to me. Well, it never made too much sense to me till I got in the Bible and read it. Amen? And the Bible says that the Lord will come, the Son of Righteousness will arise with healing in his wings. That Son is an S-U-N, that Son's S-O-N. Malachi says the Son shall arise with healing in his wings. The Son of Righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. And so this temple, listen to me. Let's see it again. Let's read it again, verse two. And let your eyes pop out at this verse. Then he brought me out of the way of the gate northward. He brought me by the way who is Jesus Christ to northward, heaven bound. And led me about the way all the days of my life and without the other gate. One day I'll come to the other gate by the way that looketh eastward where the Son of God arose from the dead and where the Son of God will come back to receive us unto himself. And from, and behold, there ran out waters on the right side. Isn't that good? Oh, prepare to be amazed. It is at the right side of God the Father, Jesus sits. I don't have any Bible to prove it, but I wouldn't be at all surprised if when the Roman uh, soldier took his spear and thrust it into the side of Jesus Christ and out came blood and water, it doesn't say it, but I wouldn't be a bit surprised if it wasn't his right side. Isn't that good? And because of Jesus, out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. Because of Jesus, we don't need no stale religion. Because of Jesus, we don't need no ritual religion. Because of Jesus, we don't need no buildings. Because of Jesus, we don't need no, no, no rules and regulations. Because of Jesus, we don't need no earthly things and material things. Because of Jesus, we don't need to have any fear in our heart or any dread in our heart. Because of Jesus, we are no longer connected to just material things we now are spiritual and set free by the power of God and moved upon by the Holy Ghost because of Jesus I said because of Jesus we're northward bound we're going to be looking to Jesus Christ coming from the east to, to shining from the east to the west and we're going home someday amen now let's go a little further And behold, there ran out waters on the right side. And I believe all the blessings of God are coming from the right hand of God the Father. And Jesus is the way. Jesus is the gate. Jesus is the promised Messiah. Jesus is the Lamb of God. And from Jesus Christ comes the waters of blessing. 
Zechariah 13, verse one, in that day there shall be a fountain open to the house of David and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for uncleanness. That fountain of water coming to you and I for forgiveness and from the blessing of God. And that Bible, the Bible says in this chapter that that river that flows from the temple of God, it goes out and it, and it goes out into the, to, to, to the promised land, goes out into Israel, goes out into that landmark. And as that water begins to flow, everything it touches, it heals. Everything it touches, it brings life. Everything it touches, it brings joy and happiness and blessing. Everything it touches, it produces massive amount of live activity and blessing because the waters get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until it's so huge it's like a lake, like an like a, a, a ocean of water because it flows out from the side of God Almighty, flows out from the blessing of God and the love of God. I want to say praise the Lord. I want to say glory to God. I want to say praise the Lord, glory to God. Heaven is my home and I'm headed that way because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Now let me come to this thought for a minute. The Bible says that when the man was measuring the temple and he looked at the water and he began to measure it when it first came out of the temple. The Bible says the waters were ankle deep. Now that ankle deep Verse three, he uses the same terminology every time he mentions and describes the rivers. He brought me through the waters. The waters to the ankles. That phrase is made three times. He brought me through. You're missing a good place to have a spell. He brought me through. He brought me through the waters and the waters were ankle deep. Now I want to say this. Ankle deep means a fresh new start. Ankle deep means a refreshing start. How many would like to have a fresh new start? Yeah. I, you know, when, it, when, when, when I was a kid, and that's been a few days ago, I'd go down to the river and I never, you know, I, throwing rocks in the river is pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Anybody ever throw a rock in the river? Anybody ever skip the rock and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, eight. skip the rock across the water? Anybody done that? Raise your hand. Anybody skip a rock across the water? Yeah. It's fun. And I always enjoyed throwing rocks, skipping rocks across the water. But when I really wanted to have fun, I'd take my shoes off and I'd get out in the water. Amen? You ain't lived until, and I'm, I, you know, I don't like them rivers that's full of chat and gravel. They hurt your, ooh, 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 your foot. I like them kind of rivers that you get out in it and it's just mud sits up between your toes. Now that's waiting. Amen? I don't care for wading in a creek that's got a bunch of rocks, but you get in a creek that's got a, got a mud carpet at the bottom of the water. That's a good place to walk. That mud just oozes up through your toes. That, that's refreshing. Amen? Come on. And you just wade in that water, and it's so good. A fresh start. That's the beginning of learning how to swim. Hello? And so the Bible says he took, he took the man of God to the temple and he measured it and he took him, brought him through the waters and the waters were to the ankles. That is a picture of a fresh, refreshing new start. Picture being born again. You came through the gate. You've came the way. You've been led about the way. You're brought to the place where you look to Jesus Christ, died and rose again from the grave, and you enjoy the blessings of God. It's to your ankles, and now you've been, a, you've been a, a introduced to a sovereign, amazing God. And then it says, he brought me through the waters a second time, and it is a knee-deep. Knee-deep is a praying, depending experience. 
He brought me to the water, through the waters again, and it's needy. That is a praying, depending experience. Hello. Needy means we no longer play around in the blessings of God. Now we get in and we intercede and we pray in the blessings of God. We no longer have been introduced to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now we become a partner with Christ and we pray and we seek the Lord because on our knees is where we do God's best work in our life. On our knees is where God does incredible things in our life. And so now we got the water up to our knees, our prayer bones, a, a place we talk to God and pray, cry out to God, a wonderful experience to pray and worship God. Then he, the, the scripture says, the, the, the angel, the man uh, of God took him to uh, 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 took him through again in verse four and brought him to the place where it was loin deep. It was a powerful experience. Uh, verse four says he brought me through. The waters were to the loins. Now the loins, it didn't say the waters to the back. It says the waters to the loins. And they teach you that if you're gonna lift things, don't lift them with your back. They teach you, if you're gonna lift something, lift it with your loins. Because your loins, the back of your leg, the loins is the strongest part of your body, at least some, some people's strongest part is the tongue. But anyway, and, and, but the, your, your loins are the strongest part of your body. And when you pick something up, you don't reach down and pick it up like this. You get up there close to it and you pick it because your loins is where the strength is. And the Bible says that this man was taken to the waters and the waters were to his loins. That's a place where you stand. That's when water begins to hit you pretty hard. That's where you gotta brace yourself to be able to stand in a river. You have to brace yourself with the loins because the water's hitting you now. Hello? Standing for Jesus, standing up for God. Amen, come on now. I'm preaching better than you're responding. He said, he not only took me to my ankle deep, and took me to knee deep, and took me to the uh, loin deep, but he brings me to the, another part of the river, waters to swim. Swimming is a masterful experience. Verse five, and it was a river that I could not pass over, for the waters were risen. Waters to swim in, a river that could not be passed over. That river became like a lake or a sea, an ocean. This is our God. I said, this is our God. And you can choose to play in the puddles. You can choose to wade in the creeks of God. You can choose to walk around ankle deep and say, oh, isn't that good? I got blessed, refreshed in church. You can choose to say, I'm saved. I don't know anything about the Bible, but I'm saved. I don't even know where John 3.16 is. Duh, I gave you the address. <laughs> people, people get saved, but they, they don't know anything. They don't grow. They've been introduced to God. They know Jesus is sovereign. They're walking with their ankle uh, deep in the blessings of God. They've been introduced to a refreshing. It's wonderful. But if you tell them, turn to the book of Hezekiah, they'll look forever. There ain't no book of Hezekiah. I remember one time I told a guy, I said, you read your Bible through? Yep. Really? Yep. Read it through 10 times. Now, he was dumb as a box of rocks. But he thought he was really smart. I said, you mean you've read through all the books? Yep. Old Testament? Yep, 10 times. I said, have you ever read the book of Genesis? Yep, read it all the way through. You ever read the book of Exodus? Yep, read it all the way through. Did you ever read the New Testament, Matthew? Yep, read it all the way through. You ever read the book of Revelation? Yep, read it all the way through. I said, you ever read the... The, 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 the book of Deuteronomy? He said, yep, read it all the way through. I said, have you ever read the book of Melchizedek? Yep, read it all the way through. I said, you liar. There ain't no Mel book of Melchizedek in the Bible. There's a character by his name, but not a book. He said, well, I got it in mine. You must not have it in yours. 
No, there's people out there that will not admit they're wrong. Now you can choose to walk in the puddles. You can choose to splash ankle deep. Or you can choose, no, I'm not just going to let my spiritual experience go to church every now and then. I'm going to get on my knees. I'm going to make acquaintance with God. I'm going to get on my knees and I'm going to talk to God three times a day. I'm going to get on my knees and talk to God. I'm going to get to know God. I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to get on my knees and you can get in the waters up to your knees. And once you pray a while and you get in the water up to your knees, God's going to say, come on out here a little further. And you're going to wade out there a little further. And man, that water's going to be rushing through. You're going to have water up to your loins. And you're saying, can't stand yet to brace yourself. Let me tell you, friend, God's people are going to need to learn to brace themselves for what's coming upon the world. There's heartaches ahead. There's storms ahead. There's trials ahead. And if the Lord doesn't come and snatch us out of here, we're going to face a lot of hard times. Brace yourself. Brace yourself. Get on your knees. Talk to God. Brace yourself. Get your loins girt about with truth. Brace yourself. Stand in the rushing waters of adversity. Stand in the blessing of God. Brace yourself because when the waters come when the waters flood you better know how to swim amen now I, at the risk of someone thinking I'm bragging on myself I know how to swim in the book of Matthew I know how to swim in the book of Revelation. I know how to swim when everybody's trying to push me under. There's a trick to not being pushed under when you're swimming and you've got people out there trying to push you under. There's a trick to it. Look up here. Look up. There's a trick to not letting people push you under when they're criticizing you and trying to push you under. There's a trick to it. So what's that trick? Well, it's just good sense. It's not a trick. It's just good sense. There's a good sense to it. What is that, preacher? Don't swim around them. Don't get in the same swimming pool. Their swimming pool is different from mine. Mine is the Bible. Mine is the things of God. Theirs is the hell holes of the world. I am not going to swim in their hell holes of the world. I'm going to swim in church and the Bible and the things of God. And if they're going to get me, they got to come to church. And then God's going to get them before they get me. Amen. Amen. Hello. Woo, the temple. The temple. God didn't promise us a material temple. God let us be born in a temple, and God borns us again in this temple, and God promises a brand new body someday, but God never promised us a material temple. God promised us a new city, Jerusalem, a heavenly place, a heavenly city. God promised us eternal life, and our temple will be the Lord God Almighty, the Lamb of God therein, that great city of God. Amen. And so I want you to know, I can tread water a long time. Hello? Did you know that drowning people usually drown because they get injured and can't swim? Or they panic and can't swim? Or someone tries to help them that can't swim and they kill them both? Hello? Amen. He said, what would you do, preacher, if you saw me drowning? If I saw you beating the water and fighting the water, what would you do, preacher? I'd swim out there where you are. I'd take my fist. Pom! I'd knock you senseless and drag you to the bank. Because if I didn't knock you senseless, you'd drown me. Come on. Hello. And so I just gonna swim. I can tread water a long time on. I can tread water a long time on John three sixteen. I can tread water a long time. 
because I know the Lord's coming soon. Hello? And one way to tread water is don't fight it. Let the water do the floating. How many know what it is to float out in the river? Just float. You know what you got to do to float? How many know what you got to do to float? If you, if you know what it is to float, what you got to do is float. You, you got to suck in a lot of air, breathe deep. Then you got to just lay your head back and you got to almost drown. That water will come right up to here. And your little beak sticking out. And you're laying back and you're floating. Now if you're going to float, you don't float this way. You get your legs out. You get your arms out. And you get as much as you out there and then you just float, lay back and that water goes in your ears. Goes up to your eye almost. Goes almost to your nose and your mouth and you're just barely sticking out. But you know what? You don't panic because if you grab for water, you're going to go under. But if you just lay there and relax, the water will keep you up. Amen. 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 I done decided when adversities come my way, when the storms come my way, when, when the world begins to ignite with all kinds of combustible problems, I'm just going to lay back in the waters of God's word and relax. And there'll be people out there gasping, grabbing for water. And they'll say, look at that preacher out there. He's just laying out there. His nose sticking out. He's about to drown. His nose sticking out. Look at that preacher out there. He's just laying back there in the water. Look at him. He, man, have you noticed he's lost a lot of weight, but he's just floating out there in the river. He's got his nose sticking up. Look at that preacher. Man, he, he going to drown sure as the world. No, you're the one that's going to drown. I am resting in the provision of the water. Isn't that good? Praise the Lord. I remember one time I, I jumped in the back when they had water in Finley. Now they don't have water in Finley hardly at all. But Riverside Inn, how many of you know where Riverside Inn is? Some of you. It's closed right now, the bridge. I got baptized, Judy and I, in March right there while the ice was still on the water. It was a bad winter, and we got baptized right there under the bridge at Riverside Inn. I remember when I was a young man, just, I think I was 15 or 16, I got in back when they had water, and it had been raining a lot, so the river was pretty high. I swam from Riverside Inn Bridge all the way to the dam at the mill pond in Ozark. Swam all the way. But I didn't do it fighting the water. And I look like a big old bullfrog out there. Water. 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 Hello? Bible says water's to swim in. Bible says that these waters will be so big, water's to swim in. That means you can walk. And, and so, I can't make it. My life's falling apart. Preacher, I don't know what I'm going to do. And you're going to go. Oh, man, I don't know what's going to happen. World's falling apart. I ain't got no money. I ain't got no place to go. My, my kids are sick. I'm sick. We're having a horrible time. God's forsaken me. And you're going. Hello? Stand with me. <clears throat> now, if I'd been thinking, I'd had Josh get a rope up here, a little winch, and, he, and I'd tied the rope around my waist, and he'd pull me up, and I'd go. I know you're visualizing that. It's, it's hard to grasp. <clears throat> I want to invite you to come to this altar. If you're struggling in your life, if you're struggling in your heart, if you're struggling in your way, I want to invite you to come down here to an altar and say, Preacher, I want to float. I want to swim. I want to enjoy the blessings of God. I want water to my knees. I want water to my loins. I want water that I can swim in. I need God's blessing in my life. 
You see, promotion comes from the north. You see, Jesus is the way. And he leads us about the way and takes us to the utter gate. And from that utter gate, we look on eastward. And we see the Lord and Savior arise with healing in his wings. We look eastward and look for the coming of Jesus Christ. And allow God to be the temple. Allow God to move in our life. Altars open, you come as they sing.